Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm going to be creating some French farmhouse wall decor. For my project today, I'm going to be using this wooden tag that I had in my stash. I'm going to remove the twine from the top and then I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen Chalk Paint. I'm going to be applying two even coats. This tag is actually a Christmas sign. I'm using the back and I will paint the other side as well. I picked it up at the end of the Christmas season for just a couple of dollars. So keep that in mind when you go out shopping to grab those cheap signs. You can turn them over or paint over them and use them in your crafting stash there. And they are really quite cheap. I think this was only about $2. Once my paint has completely dried, I am going to be using Paint Couture's Admiral Blue Chalk Paint with JRV's Grain Sack Stripe Stencil and the JRV 1 Inch Stencil Brush. I am dabbing off my excess paint and then when you are doing this particular stencil, the best way to do it is to actually drag your brush up along the lines. Doing a dabbing and swirling motion can disturb the thinner lines and that's how you tend to get bleeding underneath. As you can see, I have my hand holding down the stencil across so that the little lines can't shift and move. And you definitely want to work in sections and just take your time with this. Now, I'm just going to do one coat here because we are going for a farmhouse look. But if you are going to do two coats, I would suggest that you don't shift your stencil up until you have done that second coat. If you don't have access to this stencil, you could use IOD's Mercantile Stamp, Redesign's Stripes, or you could use tape. When my paint was dry, I then took out some 200 grit sandpaper and I am going to be lightly sanding over the top of that grain sack stripe. Again, I want this to have a distressed, worn finish. So doing this is going to help reveal the white underneath, give it a bit of a more rustic feel. And I'm also gonna just brush that dust off. Don't use anything with water. I'm then going to be using IOD's Antiquities stamp. I love these round designs here. They remind me of a postage stamp. So I'm going to ink that up with IOD's Stone Gray Permanent Ink. And then I'm going to press that in the bottom right hand corner, just overlapping the grain sack stripe just a little bit. I'm going to apply some pressure and then lift the design straight up. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Knob Topper Stamp. This is a retired design, unfortunately. I'm going to ink up one of these designs here with that same stone gray ink, and then I'm going to layer that over the top of the stamped design that we've already got there. I want these to have a bit more of a faded feel, so I am going to use a wet wipe and pull back some of that ink so it looks a little bit more faded. Now, as far as I know, IOD ink is the only ink you can do this with without it getting smudged. Next, I'm going to take out Paint Couture's Rapid Casting Resin. This is the black color. It also comes in white. I'm going to be pouring out equal parts step one and step two, and then stirring them really well together for about 30 seconds. Now, there's no real reason that I need black today. I'm actually going to be painting my castings white, but this is especially useful if you're going to be using dark colors or metallics. So I'm stirring it really well for about 30 to 40 seconds, and then I'm going to be pouring it into the cow design here. This is the village market mold. I definitely have loved this one for quite some time. The farm animals are absolutely gorgeous. And I also thought about using the laurel mold that's next to it on the right there. I actually do end up pouring out some of those, but in the end, it was just a little bit too crowded. It didn't quite fit right. So that will just go into my stash to be used later. 
After about 10 minutes, the resin is set so I can take out that sweet little cow and position it on the grain sack stripe to work out how the rest of my design is going to go. I then decided that I was going to be using IOD's Queen B stamp. They have some beautiful laurels in this one and a lovely bow. So here you can see I'm just positioning it on top of my design to work out how I want it to be laid out. I'm then going to be inking up the bow design first with IOD's permanent black ink. And I'm going to clean up any of the excess ink from around the sides. And then once I have that all tidied up, I'm going to be positioning that. I'm just moving the laurels up just a little bit, uh, just as a bit of a guide as to how my bow is going to sit. And then I'm going to press it down. I'm doing the bow first because I want the laurels to sit behind it. So I'm now going to go into the masks that come with the pack. I'm going to put the bow mask over the top of my stamped bow design. And now I'm just positioning the laurel stamps where I want them to go design side down. And then I'm going to use just a plastic sheet and press down over the top. This is just going to keep the laurels in the position that I want them to be in. So once I've done that and it's secured to the plastic sheets, I am going to use my IOD permanent black ink again. I'm inking up those designs. And then once I'm happy with the amount of ink that I have on the laurels, I am going to be carefully flipping it over and positioning it over the top of the bow, which of course has that mask protecting it. So we're not going to go over the top of the bow. It's not going to distort the image. And then I'll lift it straight up. Once that ink was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Pitch Black Chalk Paint and I'm just going to be using it with this stencil that I had in my stash. I'm using the half inch JRV stencil brush and applying the paint in a dabbing and swirling motion, always offloading that excess. I'm just going to be using the address and the design down the bottom. I then took out this other stencil design that I had. It's actually a clock face stencil, but I'm going to be using just the word Paris and the swirls and scrolls that are underneath it. I'm just positioning that in the center and then just repeating the same steps as before, adding some of that pitch black chalk paint. And I apologize for the tricky angle there, but honestly, as long as you're holding your stencil down, you're offloading that paint, you should be able to get a nice finish there, especially if you're using JRV stencil brushes. When my paint had dried, I took out that same 200 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly go over the top of the stencil text again, just to give it more of a distressed finish. This will also tie in a bit better with the ink as well that we've used. I'm then going to be using Paint Couture's Buttercream Chalk Paint on our sweet little cow casting that we did in the Paint Couture resin. And I'm going to end up doing three coats on this. Probably would have been better if I had have used the white resin, but this is what I had open and I actually really love the black. But I'm going to go over the top of it with those three coats until we have the coverage that I want. When my paint was dry, I added some of Gorilla's super glue to the back and this is what's going to secure our cow in place. So I'm going to make sure I've got a nice amount of glue there and then I'm going to position it in the center and press down. Once that glue was dry and set, I took out Paint Couture's Crackle Step 1 and I'm going to be applying it over the entire piece. I am first laying it down just in normal brush strokes, just making sure I'm getting it into all of the details. But then later I do end up changing my brush stroke direction. I end up doing a little bit of cross hatching, some random brush strokes. That helps to get a little bit more of an irregular crack finish when you do this. I let it dry really well and then after about 30 minutes it was ready to to do crackle step two. And ideally you want crackle step one to feel sticky and tacky to the touch. That's when you know that it's good to go. So I'm just going to apply step two in the exact same way that I applied step one. And then I did let this dry for about an hour. If I inspire you to try any of the Paint Couture products used in today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. 
Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Light Brown Sugar Glaze. I'm going to be painting the entire piece with this. I don't want to go too heavy, but I do want a vintage feel. I'm really working it into the details of the cow as well. And obviously, I do want it to sit down in the cracks that we created with that crackle. Once I was happy with the coverage, I then took out a wet wipe and started pulling back some of the excess. I'm using a swiping motion in some areas and a dabbing motion in others. I used the swiping motion a little bit more over the top of the cow so that it will still sit down in the details, but a bit more dabbing on the rest of it because I find that when I do a bit more of a dabbing motion that I get what looks like little age spots. At times in certain areas, I also used my water mister to gently mist the surface so that I could get a little bit more back. This is a water-based product, so you do have the freedom to do that. When the glaze was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to take that same stencil that I've already used, but I'm going to set it to the left just a little bit so it's just off center. I'm then going to come in and start stenciling over the top. I don't want to go too heavy, but I obviously do want to make sure that I am getting in those areas where we've moved that stencil over. It almost creates sort of like a shadowed effect. I am going to be doing a similar process on the design down the bottom, but this time I'm shifted the stencil down instead of to the left. When that was dry, I took out a small artist brush and I'm just gonna go in and fill in the blank spaces on the bow that we stamped with the IOD stamps. It's almost like I'm coloring it in. This was actually pretty therapeutic. So I'm just using a really small brush. I'm only hitting the areas where we have those blank spaces. I don't wanna go over the top of the black ink details, but I really do love this pop of metallic on this lovely bow. I then decided to take another paintbrush, a little bit bigger this time, and I'm going to go around and add bronze to the edges of my little artwork here. But I'm also running the brush along just to make sure that you can actually see a peak of the color. It's almost like we're creating a thin border of the bronze by going around the outside. I don't want it to be perfect. It's going to be uneven in some areas, thicker in others, but I'm going to go around the entire piece. And I think this will just frame it out quite nicely. Instead of the twine for hanging, I'm going to be using this lovely chiffon ribbon. I'm going to make a little cut and then I'm going to tear it in half. It was just a little bit thicker than I wanted it to be. And then once I have done that, I am going to be using these little tassel attachments, I believe they are. I actually found them while I was thrifting. I'm going to add some super glue over the top of the holes and then I'm going to glue those in place. I'm going to attach the ribbon for hanging on the back so that you can't see where it's attached. So I'll probably use maybe some hot glue and super glue or maybe some staples as well. Here I'm just working out exactly how much ribbon I'm going to need and I've decided that I'm actually going to cut it in half. I'm not going to need it to be that long. And then once I've got that cut to size, I took out the wet wipe that I used to wipe back the glaze and I'm just running that along the chiffon ribbon to give it more of a vintage feel. And then when that's dry, I'll glue it on the back. And here's our finished French farmhouse wall decor. This project was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed layering the stencils, the stamps and the molds. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.